Hey, this is Russ Dizder tonight at Survive to Thrive Radio Network. And uh, listen, Tuesday night, we are already into March the 9th. And in our area, the, the, the weather is great. I was out washing the car today. It was like summertime. It's about 50 degrees. I went out to the woods again and uh, doing the track five miles. Well, I tell you what, spring is here, but the discussion tonight is, uh, well, less than spring-like. It is about human sacrifice rituals, dark rituals, dark powers. The United States of America has no idea of the level of, uh, well, dark powers and rituals that have been done for, well, the ramping up for many, many years. So get ready tonight here, SurvivorThrive.net, as a guest host And I appreciate the opportunity tonight. Thank you, Steve. And um, listen, when you hear this tonight, and it's going to be a little bit gory, it's going to be a little bit, uh, uh, you know, some stuff that, uh, you know, things that I've seen in the police academy. And uh, when I was there and I watched these slides that they showed of uh, satanic rituals, of uh, dead bodies, dismembered bodies, mutilated bodies, uh, there uh, at, at the police academy down in southern Ohio and uh, Def Tech SWAT team training area were there for advanced cult crime. And there also we saw incredible uh, video and uh, other things that uh, it just does. It shocks. It really shocks everything in your system to see this, how mankind, humankind can do this to others. Appreciate the note coming in right now on uh, my email that you're listening tonight. We had a little trouble yesterday. Nobody knows really what it was. Fading in and out. But again, um, the shows are archived uh, both on Steve Quayle's site and on mine so that uh, if anything occurs, you can at least get the recordings. But uh, appreciate uh, the note in tonight. If you want to write to me, shatterxmail at sbcglobal.net. Now, I know tonight, too, will be a supernatural hour. It really will be. It's been all prayed over heavily. We trust the Spirit of God to move tonight in hearts and lives. And listen, for thousands of you, you're believers in Christ. For thousands of you that download later and listen. I want to encourage you tonight concerning your, well, your walk with God, your, your you know, what hour we are living in uh, in history. It's absolutely an amazing time. And uh, we need to really realize that not only is God's agenda advancing all over the world, and yes, millions are coming to Christ worldwide. I know that you see in your area and uh, you see and feel the darkness, but I want you to know that uh, God will work in your life and through your life. And you are needed now more than ever to live for Christ and allow His presence, power, authority, grace, and mercy to come through. For the Satanists and others and the Reconners coming in tonight, those that are seeking and looking for an answer, listen, I want to welcome you tonight because I believe that you're here by the providence of God. And I would encourage you to take the time to listen and uh, and uh, just literally, um, you know, at least check it out. What we're saying tonight concerning dark rituals and dark powers. We have a new series that we're putting out. My name is Russ Dizdar, by the way. Shatterthedarkness.net is our website, and it has hundreds of MP3s, training and series, and all kinds of things that are going on there. So take your time. But a brand new series we're just putting up, and it's called Dark Rituals, Dark Powers. How to detect satanic ritual warfare, and even placed infiltration into your... Well, into the government, into the military, into law enforcement, into the churches, into your neighborhoods. How do you detect that? And how do you know of satanic rituals? Because I'm going to tell you right now what I believe. You can you can chuck it up as just my opinion. But uh, 25 years into this work, being places uh, around the nation and uh, dealing with what we have done, I'm going to tell you that I believe in the last 50 years that uh, the development of the underground satanic system the real stuff of the Brotherhood, the Ancient Brotherhood, the Black Flame, whatever you want to call it, that probably in every single city and town across America, by design, by design, 
covens have gathered. I mean, Michael Aquino, the founder of the Temple of Set, by the way, big old intellectual, big old, uh, you know, uh, information man on uh, on uh, on well, nuclear nuclear, you know, weapons, and uh, he's uh, very versed in weaponry and mind control, and uh, needs to be checked out. But he he years ago boasted that they had satanic grottos or groups on every single military base worldwide. Now, I don't know if you and I have looked hard enough at all of the uh, evidences, but what we have done in our research, not just in the books, but in the victims, on the field, in law enforcement, um, I'm telling you right now, we've only, we've only looked at the tip of the iceberg because the depth of this evolution of Satan's agenda is still um, shrouded in supernatural dark power. And uh, there is a sequence to the development and the coming anarchy. Now, when that bursts out, kind of like a satanic counterfeit Pentecost anarchy that will eventually bring in the Antichrist. Now, that's another story, but there's movement. Listen, for those believers in Christ, researchers of biblical prophecy... It's been for a long time that all the prophecy studies have been on what God's doing and Israel and uh, uh, discussions on the rapture and, the, and all the different issues. What most have not done since the New Testament, one third of it is biblical prophecy. And out of that one third, the majority may deal with God giving insight on the satanic agenda, the development. It's as though God took Satan's playbook and has revealed the sequential plan and development. How have we missed this? In biblical prophecy, we have God giving what he's going to do, what mankind is doing, what's happening collectively around the world, but also the only infallible, the only accurate, the only detailed account of what uh, Satan, the fallen cherub, the dark side, the secret power of lawlessness is going to be doing. Politicians and military, you are the primary aim. And it's the scientists and uh, many of those that are going to be um, beckoned and uh, supernatural events and visitations and callings. All kinds of masqueraded supernatural presence to draw individuals into, well, the rise of globalism and uh, then the rise of the coming Antichrist. But I'm going to tell you now, it's not going to be done without blood. The bloodshed. I am saying in the United States, Canada, Australia, throughout Europe, the UK, probably even Russia. Nationwide, as biblical history records the days of Manasseh, and God and God alone could tell the people, there was nobody there researching it. There was nobody there going after it. I mean, the leader of the land opened the door. The leaders opened the door. They turned the nation of God, the city of God, uh, into, um, well, a harlot of rituals and Moloch and child sacrifice. Manasseh, the king, he even sacrificed his own son. What's the rationalization for that? The powers of darkness twisting concept, twisting uh, the mind and the heart and, and giving the sense of, uh, well, a, a, a spiritual pleasure, a spiritual um, curiosity, a spiritual convincing that this is a good thing to fry your child in a hot burning pan. The same elements of torture and pain and uh, longevity of that, the raising of human energy and the coming of the demons and the attraction. Those cauldrons, those slabs, those altars, those literal human frying pans are uh, the stuff of the demons and uh, the place where the doorways have been opened in broad ways. So tonight, Survive to Thrive, 7 and 8 p.m. on Tuesday nights, folks. We're going to dig in again tonight out of the theme for the week, dark rituals, dark powers, when, where, and why of human sacrifice. Tonight, the title, Dark Powers Require, and they come through the door of human sacrifice. 
Now, doing a little more study tonight, by the way, somebody sent me an, uh, well, they sent me a note on a book they have called Human Sacrifice. Nigel Davies wrote it, and uh, I, so I ordered it. It shows on the front, again, a human being being sacrificed. <laughs> it's amazing to me that um, they're the 2012ers and those who are in the Mayan prophecies that have kind of been um, kind of been meshed over by kind of a New Age masquerading angel of light uh, trying to make something good out of the gory blood of the Mayans and the Aztecs. But anyway, listen. Katsikadal. Small g God among them in those days. I'm looking at a picture that is uh, actually a codex that is in the Vatican Museum. It is a picture of Katsikadal taking a knife, stabbing it in the eye and the head of a sacrificial victim. Imagine that. I'm looking at pictures of, uh, in Hinduism, human sacrifice. The Aztecs and a skull-rack blood-stained temple. Hundreds of human skulls on racks after they have been sacrificed. And for those that think that the Tibetans are just simple, quiet individuals, here's a picture. It's in the museum in Hamburg, Germany. Here's the um, notation underneath. Tibetan gods, small g. And it shows many of them. Isn't this the place where the great white brotherhood is above in the skies? The ascended masters guiding planetary movement towards a new world order, towards a world teacher? Are these the deities I'm looking at that they're talking about? And it says here, Tibetan gods eating human hearts. Astounding. Absolutely astounding. doesn't make any difference. You can do studies on human sacrifice in Ireland. You can look at it throughout Europe, in Russia, around the world, Africa, of course, South America, Afro-Brazilian. I still am, uh, am bugged by and, 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 and taken by the story of the boy, the 12-year-old, in Argentina. And I've got a link, if you look on the shadowofthedarkness.net site, Spanish exorcist, addresses claims of sacrifice, satanic sacrifice, and influence in the Vatican. So I've been making a little bit of uh, noise about this lately, and we've noticed downloads of hundreds of uh, MP3s in Vatican City in certain buildings. And for those that are listening, if you're on the dark side, do you think for a moment God does not see for Luciferians, the real ones out there that monitor the show, do you think for a moment God doesn't see the hidden places, the human sacrifices, the babies? Listen, i got another book here to my left. It's called Human Sacrifice, a shocking expose of ritual killings worldwide by Jimmy Lee Shreve. Now, I read a number of stories in the book, and he goes worldwide on all these things, and he's talking about one lady, Margaret Ramirez in Washington Heights. It's in New York. Kind of eccentric woman. People saw her. She looked like a crazy lady and uh, self-confessed witch, ob- obsessed by the occult. So I'm looking here on page 2 and 3 and on in here, and I'm looking later on in the book in page 1 in the 90s, 190s, about some Germans, and I'll get to that in a moment. But here I'm, I'm amazed again. This is just simply back as far as July 2000. That the woman had been killed or died, I believe died here, and that the cops had gone to the home of, of Ramirez, and there they found the son. And he learned of his mother's death, and so she kind of uh, he kind of went kind of crazed. They had to put him in uh, uh, handcuffs, and the officers, and I'm going to now quote right from the book, page two, quote, it reeked of incense, which, at least up to a point, covered up the gut-wrenching stench of decay that pervaded every room. The police officers steeled themselves. Instinct and the terrible smell told them they were about to find something ghastly. They weren't wrong. The first items they found were two skulls. One from an adult 
Another from a two-year-old child. The child's skull was in a cauldron and was coated with rotting flesh, dried blood, and candle wax. Rank-smelling dirt, which investigators later came to believe was gathered from a local cemetery, was scattered on the floor. And statues of Catholic saints were in every corner of the room. They found uh, jars filled with pieces of human flesh floating in murky, mercury, uh, murky uh, formaldehyde. And they found other parts and other pieces and, uh, well, other body parts. Now, in reading this story, it reminds me of a real one. In dealing with a federal officer's wife, she was abducted again, and we went to Cleveland, Ohio, to try to find her. And so the team was praying, and we were looking, and we were searching, and uh, it all led us to a priestess out of what is considered Kintabli. It's similar to Palo Mayombi, and somewhat maybe like the Abakwa. Kind of a voodooism, for those who don't know those terms. When... We told law enforcement that showed up when we found the Guatemalans that were there hunting us down and set a trap because they wanted to kill us. Law enforcement came in from uh, Cleveland District 9 and uh, actually went in the house I told them that the priestess was, where she was staying, and they pounded on her door and pounded on her door. Finally, she opened the door because they were about ready to break it down. When they opened the door, incense. And when I walked into the room, this priestess was stunned as she looked at me. You see, they had done a death ritual some weeks prior and came down into the Akron, Ohio area to see. They came right to my house to see if I was dead. I'll tell you about that story sometime later, but this involves the federal officers, the wife, and they're looking for the woman. And as the officers walk in, flashlights on, the entire room also filled with uh, ritual items and smoke. And the entire room was uh, a, a ritual chamber. Astounding. When we infiltrated the Black Sun camp of the OTO in our area years ago, just a regular apartment, but when you enter it, a ritual chamber. How many times have we done this again and again and again? How many times have we gone to places and dug up bones and uh, been in the areas? We have felt the powers. We have engaged uh, the perpetrators. We have had the curses called down and rituals done against us. I'll never forget the picture I got in the mail from the ancient brotherhood. There was a picture of a uh, hooded, black hooded Satanist priest holding a baby that had been cut and blood was coming. And and, uh, the picture was of the blood spilling down the page. And there was a notation to the riot that said, this blood is for you. That's all it was. When I engaged the Satanist out of that, well, Pennsylvania, they told me that they simply said, Russ, In your honor, they sacrificed a baby conjuring powers to come against you. I said, forget in my honor part. There's a scripture that says nothing in all of creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Like in the days of old. Benassi and that whole system, 2 Kings 21, 22, the word of God, God said in the nation, innocent blood had been shed from one side to the other. That wasn't in the newspaper. That wasn't any prophets talking about it. That wasn't anybody exposing it. It was God himself exposing what has always been occurring since the fall of the human race. There's something about the shedding of human blood, the conjuring of demonic powers, the worship of the demon gods, the opening of doorways and bringing them onto this side. And then the weaponization of those powers. Learning how to not only receive the powers and receive uh, the answers to demonically oriented prayers. To summon the powers to put on the objects to summon the powers to be in the air and the atmosphere and to literally claim territory 
as if the atmosphere would be charged with dark powers. Human sacrifice, blood sacrifice, and even animal sacrifice, where it's been done, you can be sure the doors have been opened and the powers are present. What amazes me is that in the biblical revelation of the secret power of lawlessness, and I'll say a key factor is this if we understand biblical revelation, there is no advance to the satanic agenda without real, sheer, actual power, real spiritual force. In the New Age movement, and all those who are in the New Age, you are receiving, acquiring, converting with, summoning, engaging, highly masqueraded demonic presence. The undergrounders know something different. I shared Monday night about the sheer numbers into the millions upon millions in the United States, in Canada, Australia, all across Europe, in England. All of those that have been done over the last 50 years, the ramping up of the numbers is astounding when you deal with satanic ritual abuse. When you find, well, part of the victims anyway. When you realize that satanic crime has gone on all across the nation, though barely spoken about, barely revealed by law enforcement, the pictures would be too stunning. Being called in to Akron, Ohio, a high-profile defense attorney got into his office. He said, Russ, do you believe Satan is real? I, I, that was shocked. A lawyer is asking me if I believe Satan is real. I looked at him and I said, absolutely. And he says, now I do too. You see, he's defending a guy charged with a brutal, stabbing, gruesome, bloody murder of a middle-aged woman. Right in the town area where I go to a coffee shop known for occultism. It happened a day or two before the ritual date in September of the Hands of Glory. It occurred late night, on until maybe three in the morning, where stab after stab after stab after stab on your body, all the blood coming out, but not killing her. The sexually oriented perversions that were going on, the raising of human energy, the, the shedding of blood, the, the, this attracts the dark side. It's, it's what brings them to attach and to come on and to, and to bathe in until what some call the third power. When they have reached a kind of pinnacle of of the torture, of the pain, the energies, the acquiring of demonic presence, then there is the actual murder. In that case, like many others we've dealt with, the perpetrator then would receive the powers. Some call it the cleansing of satanic blood, Aryan blood, their blood, to keep the blood demonized and the properties and abilities inside. After that was done, the hands were removed. The body left. The perpetrators left. In all of this law enforcement engagement and my investigation, my dealing with the man in prison, they never found the hands. See, the hands of glory can be done by Satanists, by deep, dark occultists, to gather the powers of invisibility, to be cloaked, to keep themselves hidden. Like in the case of Madam Morris, college student, United States, stolen, others abducted, in kind of the, well, a mixture of, of, of rituals, torture, and murder, and bloodshed. Many bodies that were found. See, law enforcement agents brought to us at DefTech in a training on advanced field occult crimes. Pictures of the digs, of the bodies, of the cauldrons, of the bones, of the spine of an American college student that had been boiled down. It was wore around the neck of one of the occultists. 
as a trophy, as a object of power, probably demonized. The woman that was involved is known to be a multiple. S-R-A-D-I-D, whatever you want to call it, a chosen one. Deep inside, ritual priestess summoning with ancient languages, twilight language, the dark powers. They did rituals to cloak themselves even from law enforcement and against law enforcement because part of what they did was run drugs. Drug runners from South America. Tony Cowell will speak on this and is an expert on this at the conference in St. Louis, April 9th and 10th. If you, for a moment, don't know the depth of occult crimes in the United States of America, let me tell you something. God is able to say today from one end of the nation to the other, innocent blood has been shed, is being shed, and I'm telling you that it's true. Absolutely true. Dark rituals and dark powers. I'm going to tell you in a few minutes here when we come back after our break about some of the reasons why, some of the cases we're involved with, and how the powers are not just received for self, but sent, fueling satanic agenda, fueling globalism, and how the older rituals of Jack Parsons and the Babylon working, connected to JPL, connected to American scientists, military individuals, well, all of it, when we get back. Let's take a listen to Steve. Taking a look at some of the emails right now. Appreciate you writing in and those requesting even the, uh, well, the newsletter we put out twice a month. If you don't get that, you can uh, write to us. Again, take a look at shatterthedarkness.net. And um, if you don't get it, you can go up to the right-hand corner on the top and you can click on. That's where we put the uh, current and uh, then also the last uh, week's or month's uh, newsletters. Always the newest pro uh, podcast, broadcasts, and uh, other information. So um, I got a note also here the other night. I think it was yesterday, yeah. It says, hi, Russ. Uh, remember the two dogs I came on to? They were burned to a crisp. A kind of uh, hugging together, 
Now, it talks about an Indian reservation back in an auto junkyard. And this is true. There are many stories. People out in the woods, they run upon an, an area, an altar area. Now, we have a series that is going on right now. Uh, we've got three of the sessions up that it deals with how to begin to detect it in your area, how to go after it, how to know what's really happening, what happens if you come across it. There's a special one for law enforcement coming up. So that series is there. It's free for everyone, and uh, we hope that you get it. Pass it around if you could, and uh, that would be a good thing here. I want to say thank you to Steve again, and uh, we are back here, Survive to Thrive, the radio network, and uh, this is Russ Dizdar. Looking again in Human Sacrifice, the book by Jimmy Lee Shreve, and he tells a story. It's on the web also, by the way. By the way, I watched a video tonight. Of the, uh, It's a law enforcement video where, where the FBI are going in to actually arrest individuals for drug trade. Once they get inside there and they open up a box there's a human head still warm they go into another room and there in the other room is a satanic uh, inverted uh, pentagram and candle in the middle is a chalice with human blood then they begin to find body parts they had to call in more workers and by the time they were all done 28 bodies most all of the heads were gone and never recovered because they were sold off to other covens. You see, that's why they will steal bones in crypts or in uh, caskets, heads. I mean, that's, that's worth a lot of money because those are objects that can be charged just like those hands that were cut off that young girl here in this area. They've never been found to this very day. And the hands of glory, after they've been you know, worked, and you have to read the story about it, don't want to go into it, but they are kind of like petrified, and they're put on an altar. And they're the hands of glory, they, they're, pow- they're objects of power, demonic presence on them. And when you think in terms of, uh, again, the why, which I'm going to define here in a few moments, the issue is the fact that there is, um, well, major human sacrifice. So I'm reading a couple uh, in Germany that bring over their friend, Frank. Frank comes over to do partying and drinking and smoking up and all that kind of stuff. But the Rudas, uh, the young lady's 23, the the man is 26. They had planned something else. Uh, The pictures of her with uh, long black hair, goth looking, one side of her head shaved, an upside down cross on it. I mean, you can look about. I mean, you can find this on the web. I mean, it's 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 there. It's in the book here. Material. It's a well-known case. But it's kind of interesting. This uh, detailed research account. The woman talks about how her husband struck him on the head twice with the hammer. I quote that out of the book, page one eighty-nine. Then the woman confesses, and I quote: "Then my knife." started to glow, and I heard the command to stab him in the heart. The command, she said, came from Satan. Without hesitation, this woman and her husband, they stabbed Frank 66 times with a variety of sharp objects. The woman I told you about, the case I was involved, I think it was like 137 times. During this slaughter in the name of Satan, for Satan, directed by Satan. She confesses, and I quote, that during the killing, a powerful force or present presence was in the room with them. Want me to say it again? Do we not understand this? Now listen, I'm not saying this to scare us. I'm saying that saying this to tell us that what the biblical records reveal, past, present, and what's to come, there is vast human sacrifice. Law enforcement knows about it. We have stories of it again and again. Thousands upon thousands of victims of satanic ritual abuse. They can tell you detailed stories of even how they were forced uh, to kill a baby, to be involved, the eating of human flesh, and all the rest that is done. And they will confess concerning, quote, the powerful force or presence. The idea of um, 
And I quote again, they were charged by the aura of Satan. Didn't Jesus say Satan is a murderer? Didn't Jesus say Satan was a murderer? I think that we need to understand that many uh, occult crime cases, Tom McGowan's great book, Program to Kill, referring to those with multiple personalities whose subpersonalities demonized do the killing many times. Most of the serial rapists and uh, killers, like uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. Did you know that I saw the pictures of the inside of his house? Did you know the media never told the story about what he was into other than other than bringing young men there and uh and and killing them and trying to have sex with them and uh literally trying to he would take and try to bore a hole into their head and pour acid and try to make a zombie for his sexual use he had human human meat in the freezer that he used for his dinners, body parts. Now, everybody looked at it and uh, saw that it was gruesome, that it was hor- horrifying. And actually, um, Jeffrey Dahmer was born and raised about 20 miles from where I live. I've been by his house. I talked to the law enforcement agent that talked to the family of the first young man that he taken to his house and had killed. Bone fragments found all over in the yard and underneath a part of the basement. What nobody really deals with, though, is the fact that Dahmer had a satanic altar built by human thigh bones. And a power cone, looks like a triangle, built out of human skulls. Now back again to the German story concerning these two that... um, did the sacrificing again they had been they'd been caught they had traveled to a town where well a 15 year old was murdered by three so-called children of satan after a black mass now i know that people talked about in the 80s and especially the 90s satanic panic and all the rest and uh, most of the individuals dealing with it did not deal with uh hunting down uh the factors, the uh, the uh, the things that were really occurring. We've done this now for 20 years. We're doing it. We were there Friday night. We're praying again in one place where we believe body parts are buried. In another place where body parts may be buried. For the individuals that were victims that know where these things were done. So when we talk about this now concerning human sacrifice... The biblical picture is the ramping up of felt manifested demonic powers that will, on the one hand, push globalism, push and uh, convince political powers of the world, push and convince military leadership, give the ideas, and, and so forth. Now, in the midst of all of this comes what Alex Jones had done in revealing more of the inside of Bohemian Grove. See, back in the early 90s, a chosen one, satanic ritual abuse. I sat with for hours and hours and hours and a number of years listening to the detailed stories of human sacrifice, of rituals, of how they conjure, of the kind of languages that are used, the drawings of languages that they shown me. One day, this individual sat down in the offices, and on 17 by 11 size pages, they drew out cabins in wooded areas, and an owl in a lake, and uh, a, a body of individuals, and a little body being taken. And they began to describe to me, and they gave to me a necklace with a little owl on it. They said they had received. They had been there as a victim. They had been used as a sex slave. As part of the Monarch Project, many others, maybe even listening tonight. See, a lot of the victims listen, and I know that a lot of you are afraid to speak out. I know that subpersonalities, they listen and they want to know, and the, and the little personalities that have been through it all. There's so many of you out there that have not gotten any help at all. 
I mean, we're just kind of, again, left and right. It'll, it'll be again Thursday and Friday and Saturday uh, engaging those uh, that are victims. Drawing the stories, telling the stories, taking us to the places, the barns, the woods, the double basements, the buildings. The ancient practice is not just ancient. It is present. It is cloaked in deep secrecy. It is there and can be found out. And I mentioned in the series we're doing about Ezekiel chapter 8, when, again, even the prophet did not know that a deep serpent-worshipping cult was there in the deep caves, operating, practicing detestable things, human sacrifice, cannibalism, right in the city of God. So as I say to a lot of Christians, because not all, but many churches we've been engaged with, they've had infiltrators. They've had their buildings used unknowingly used by infiltrating, highly trained, highly specialized infiltrators that have come in. See, they love to get into the buildings. They really do. That's why they love, I mean, they really, the the black flame, the old, old, uh, deep Luciferians. You've got to understand the testimony of priests, Father Malachi Martin, other stories that are cropping up all over Italy, demonization. All over Italy, occult crimes, satanic practices. And in the Vatican, in St. Paul's, in the buildings, in Catholic churches. Take a read of the book entitled Lucifer's Lodge by William Kennedy, a Catholic commissioned by Father Malachi Martin to continue the exposure in Boston, in Los Angeles, across the nation. We, well, I'll just say I know of some individuals that have even crossed the line to go into church buildings to find hidden what are called the black rooms. You see, one reason why it's not just ripped wide open is, again, the secrecy, the power that is raised to keep them cloaked. Barring the supernatural breaking in of God, the majority of this will stay hidden until the great revolt and the chaos that's to come and the rise of Antichrist. The coming mother of all rituals. Christians who are questioning what we're talking about right now need to look at Revelation 16 and study it well. When's the last time pastors had spoken about God giving a infallible, accurate picture of detailed future history, a ritual release of demonic force targeting the already hooked political leaders, military leaders, the only reason Armageddon will occur is by the sheer force of demonic presence that draws the people there. In your cities, rituals have been done so that the practitioners can receive powers, receive abilities, receive enhancements, receive answers, sex rituals, blood rituals, destruction rituals, death rituals, Chaos rituals, on and on and on it goes. They are there to receive. Secondly, as I mentioned last night, they are there to transfer demons on those being trained up in the coven, those being designed for the future chaos and becoming enforcers of Antichrist's regime. Transfer of demons can occur in a sex ritual. Take a look at the satanic calendar. Take a look literally. I mean, do the search. Look it up. I, we've seen it way back into the 80s, into the night, long before it was on the web. We've got co confiscated material, handwritten material, books of shadows, detailed accounts of ritual you know, occurrences. 
And the transfer of demons from high-level priests into the bodies in a ritual called the marriage to the beast at 6 and 13. Untold numbers and kinds of rituals. Bizarre atmosphere. Charged. The sense of a manifested presence of darkness. Vast darkness. Point number three. The raising of the powers, the dark powers, the demons, so that at the end of a human sacrifice, the demons are there, the practitioners order them on objects to be used around the neck, in a house, around a house, planted in the yard, taken to a church, given to a pastor. Demonized objects are like toxic presence to believers in Christ. The curses that are on them. The assignments that are on them. That's one way. And you might want to do this uh, if you've been to all the lands and you've picked up objects, charged objects, dedicated objects to demon gods, realizing that the demonic presence is on the object. We find this true with many young people bringing things in. One young girl came to our offices. The mother brought her in. The moment we prayed, she was thrown to the ground. The demon spoke. We commanded it out. She was set free. She took us back to her basement where she lived in the home. We came out with two garbage bags filled with objects that were used in, I would call it light-level rituals, some little of her own blood rituals, but infested her with demonic presence and her home. Have any objects in your house demonized? Pastors and leaders and church leaders? Any of the victims uh, of satanic ritual abuse giving you objects? We have had some personalities inside satanically ritually abused individuals. The subpersonalities. Charging the objects, the upfront person doesn't know it, and uh, you're given a gift. Demonized with assignments. In the Old Testament, the devoted things. That's why God said, don't touch them, burn them. That's why Josiah, you know, destroyed those objects, demonized objects, demonized symbols, demonized altars, demonized. And he destroyed them and burned them and crushed them. And uh, cover them over with, with latrines. See, here's part of the problem where some, many of those ancient temples where there's artifacts that are demonized objects that are going under archaeological digs that are found. The moment you grab a hold of them, the moment you take them in, the demons begin to operate. They begin to do their work. Demons don't die. They may wait. You may absolutely be sure they are. the troops are amassed at the border of the veil. Uh, they have been pouring through for 40, 50 years un, in an unprecedented manner, by the way. And, I, and, I, and listen, in the series, I give you the reasons for this. And if you really want to engage this, again, as a believer in Christ, without fear... Knowing the blood of Christ, the authority of Christ, the power of God, the armor of God, the word of God, the spirit of God, the living Christ of God in your life. What do you have to fear? If you're lost and you don't know Jesus, you're vulnerable. You're vulnerable to the mass of deception. You're vulnerable to the works, the, the preparatory works of the Antichrist. You're vulnerable to rituals and the powers that are released in your area. You see, number one, they receive the powers and get the favors. Number two, they transfer them on other, other uh, individuals in the coven. Number three, they transfer them on objects to be used. Number four, they raise the demons and send them. They may even come and get pictures, hair, objects, take pictures of your house, your church, and bring those to the ritual. In the summoning of the demons, it's almost like giving it to the hounds of, of hell. And the demons then are assigned, go after this person. 
bring this person sickness, crush their finances, destroy their church. And they continue to do this and do this and do this. And again, as they infiltrate, they like to sneak in, use the building, somehow obtain a key, and do the rituals right in the building. It is all meant to be done in pure, satanic, supernaturally induced, empowered secrecy. That's why there's individual that individuals and churches, they know that crazy, bizarre things have gone on, and they don't know what has hit them. Number five, real underground Luciferians like those that would infiltrate the Vatican churches, Bohemian Grove, high places all over the place. They're raising the powers to send them in the atmosphere, to send them to charge uh, and, and to release them over cities to what they call dirtying the air. Now, listen, that's why I'm asking you. Do you feel it in the air? Do you feel it over the city? Do you feel it in certain areas? It's not just ritual areas that I've gone in where I felt powers. Not just when people took me to Salem to specific houses where real dark uh, powers are summoned, where you can feel the charging powers there. I've been in those basements. I've been in those barns. I've been in the places where human blood has been shed. I've been given confiscated objects and cauldrons in which we've burned. Which we've burned. We're living in a day where it is all surfacing. And for those brave enough in Christ and called and felt led by the Spirit of God to expose evil deeds of darkness. You can't expose what you don't know. Let me tell you, they're unleashing the powers in the air. They're unleashing the powers. Can I tell you about a sacrifice of a 14-year-old? How about a 17-year-old? A case that we're working on right now. I can tell you about those cases. I can tell you about what was done to them. But I'll leave that for Wednesday night. Kathy and Sarah The case has never been solved, and now the FBI on their pages have taken hold of the case. I'm going to bring it to the public light tomorrow night, Wednesday. Another case out of uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania, a little boy named Lewis. I'm going to bring it to light tomorrow night. I believe the reasons why some of these crimes have not been solved, because of the satanic powers that have literally protected I believe that if there's believers out there in Christ that are willing, if there are churches that are willing to now unleash the power of prayer, not 38 seconds on a Sunday morning, but a half hour, 40 minutes, including authoritative prayers against the dark powers in the air, on the ground, praying for exposure of the covens, of the gateways and doorways of where things are being done. Listen, are you going to sit back and allow the satanic agenda to grow without without any engagement? Are Christians going to be just silent, hiding out until the end of days? That is a shame and a sham and a dark mark on what real Christendom is all about. You want to know real Christendom? Look in the book of Acts. Look how many times they encountered the dark side. Look how Philip engaged a city covered in dark powers. Look how Paul in... One city where one little girl was being spiritually prostituted. A demon, python is the Greek word, powerfully operating through her, predicting bits and pieces of the future. He turns around. Read it. Acts 16.16. He turns around. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, get out. He commands the authority Christ has given the believer. Can I talk about that tomorrow night? And for you to appropriate once and for all, Lord Jesus, thank you for the authority. I will use it. You're meant to use it to trample the dark side, to overcome all the power of the enemy. Not only in your life, in your family, throughout the church, in your city. Where are the prayer warriors? Where are those who stand and watch and pray at the walls? Where are the soul-winning witnesses that understand authority and engage even demon-possessed people? And are there anyone like Ezekiel, led by God, to look into the dark, dark 
tunnels of deep satanic worship. Are you willing to let God show you? Are you willing to let God use you? As a believer in Christ, I pray that God will use many of you. If you don't know the living Christ, understand 1 John chapter 2. Halosmos. Halosmos. It's the Greek word. The atoning sacrifice. Have you read this? Have you read this at all? For every one of us right now, that Jesus Christ shed His blood. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and the sins of the whole world. The power of God. The power of the blood of Christ. You can receive Christ right now. Please do. Write to me, ShatterXmail, SBCGlobal.net. Listen, Rust is are here, Survive to Thrive, the radio network, and we appreciate you being here. See you Wednesday night at 6 p.m. God bless. Good night.